Gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you this day as the true children of the God who is above all, pleading, Father, for your hands to be on every one of us, guiding us, leading us, that all that we do say or even give thought to will be on earth as it is in heaven and no other. We love you, Father God. We ask for your hands to be on our brothers and sisters that are still on the way. Bring them here safely. And those who are able to come, your blessings will be on them. That they will know that you are with us 24-7. We love you, Father God. In the most righteous name of Christ Jesus, Jesus we pray and all God's children say, Amen. Amen. So come, Holy Spirit, move in your people. Just to Jesus, it's glory to see. Bring down from heaven fresh living water. Bring us your liberty. Bring us your Good morning, church. So welcome over here today because it's a special day. It's Pastor Appreciation Day. Again, yeah, hello. So I don't know about you guys, but Pastor Ray, I feel like you saved my life so many times. How about I have a Pastor Ray, guys? Wow, Pastor Ray. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Faithful man of God, Mahal Pastor. When I fly with Jesus, oh, I got no more worries on my mind. All right. Leave my worldly troubles all behind. That's right. But don't go without living life. Keep this good joy in my life. When I fly with Jesus, say, I got no more worries on my mind. Oh, yeah. Leave my worries, leave my worries, troubles all behind. That's right. Oh, God. Yeah. 
us the promise of the Father still the same. Oh, yeah. And he'll give it to you. And it's in Jesus' name. Oh, yeah. Because Jesus paid the price for you to play the seat of the Zion day. So, oh, Jesus, we got my strength. And we need to rest on our hearts. I'm on my way to Zion now. Talk me how we're walking now. I fly. Now I fly. Say, Jesus, we got my strength. We got my strength. And we need us a long time. I'm on my way to Zion now. Talk me how we're walking now. I fly. Now I fly. I'm on my way to Zion now. You taught me how to walk in my wild life. I'm on my way to Zion now. You taught me how to walk in my wild life. So, um, Good morning, good morning. For real, mahalo ke po. So, um, I'm just wanted to introduce myself. I don't know everybody, but I'm uh, Pastor Moku's son. This is my son. So, mahalo you guys for letting us come and worship with you guys. Um, so, um, I just wanted to, like I always say, get in your comfortable place. These are all prayers, yeah, these songs. I'm going to pull it and just to remember what space. We want to be in yeah over there. So if you feel comfortable sitting down, go ahead and sit down. Feel comfortable jumping up and down, that's okay. You gotta go outside and find one prayer closet someplace, that's okay too. But main thing, we take this opportunity to pull it, yeah, to connect with the Lord, because he said that his spirit feels the presence of the time. Yeah, he doesn't lie. So let's go. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord.
Pastor Brown. And I just want to reiterate the love of Jesus Christ and how he demonstrated his grace and mercy in our life. He loved and us get together in fellowship, especially over a meal. Think of the Shabbat that they had. It's all, all about a, a time to get together, share a meal, and praise God. Now, if you're new here, hey, and this is your first time, we celebrate in the open communion um, here. And basically what that means is if you believe in Jesus Christ, that he died for our sins, and that we can have an eternal relationship, an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. Please, we invite you to partake with us. The main thing, it was uh, the night before, we were celebrating the Passover in the It was the night before Jesus was to go to the cross for the remission of our sins. And he was with his apostles and other disciples in the upper room. And he came together knowing it was going to be his last meal with them until he comes again. And so during the meal, he took the bread. He broke it. Passed it around and, and gave thanks. And the whole purpose be, behind what we do is a sharing is to remember what he did for us on the cross. The beating, the scourging, the humiliation, the pain, the shame, all that he took as the payment for our sin. So as we progress through this time, open your heart to Jesus, yeah? Ask him for forgiveness of any sins that may be on your heart. And come together in knowing that your sins are forgiven through what he has done for us on the cross. So he took this bread after giving it to the disciples and said, Take this and eat it, and do it in remembrance of me. Maybe I'll get this. Maybe not. So after the break, he took the cup of wine, again blessed it, and giving thanks. He said to his disciples, for this is the cup, reminiscent of my blood, which symbolizes a new covenant between us and God, the Father. As often as he do this, do this in remembrance of him. Father God, we thank you so. You're such a loving God. And to just for a moment or two reflect on not only have you created us, but you have created us with a plan. And that all that Jesus did for us while here on earth, when he ascended to God the Father to sit at his right hand, he mediates between, or for, for us, between God and Allah. And he has instilled in us the Holy Spirit. So now he guides us through the Holy Spirit. So Lord, 
Jesus Christ. We thank you for your saving grace. The fact that we can come to fellowship, Lord, and recognize and demonstrate the love you have so mercifully showed to us, Lord, that we're also empowered to share with us each other. We thank you for this time in you, Lord, and the sharing of our hearts during the breaking of the bread and the drinking of the wine. And in Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. 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 Show me the way that I may walk with you. Show me the way I put my hope in you. Stressful times, uh, probably like right now. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to talk about that, but you know, just wanted to make a happy sound, and so I just started with this this line. So like, oh. la, 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 la. Cleanse 
one man until he turn and go walk in Yahweh. This is the time right now we get up and aloha kekahi kekahi. Thank you, Shane. Oh, that's uh, greet each other. You know, Pastor Ray was trying to be sneaky last month because he went on vacation for a couple weeks. And so he jumped the gun on Pastor Appreciation Day. And so it was wonderful because um, Pastor Ray said some wonderful, nice things about us. And so we love you, Pastor. Um, what is also amazing is that, uh, you know how most times we open up with scripture and the word after the first song. And I had a, uh, the word prepared this morning. And it wasn't intentionally for Pastor Appreciation Day, but just so happened it is. And it speaks about it speaks about Christian conduct and how we as a church should, should behave and how we should react to one another. And that comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, but it also speaks about our leaders in the church. The word says in verse 12, now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you who care for you in the Lord and who admonish you, hold them in the highest regard in love because of their work. Live in peace with one another. And so we're called to do that, to, to honor those who work hard among us. Um, and so, Pastor Ray, we love you. We're so grateful for that. I have another scripture too. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17 says, Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your souls. Amen. 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 And, um, you know, I was able to share the last time what Pastor Ray means to me and my family. And we've been coming here for 15 years. And our lives have been completely transformed under the guidance of Pastor Ray and Auntie Lani. And I love you. <laughs> Auntie Lani, you text me more than anybody else in the church, so I love you. <laughs> I love you for that. Um, so, Auntie Eva, we want to um, give Pastor and Auntie Lani, uh, we want to lay them, and you guys want to say something. Yes. This young Ohana, if you guys don't know if you're newer, they grew up in the church, and they have... And, they're living their lives and being amazing Christian citizens in this world. Yeah, 
Pastor Ray, like uh, Kiliona said, oh, wait. We love you both so much. Uh, I always said when I first came here, remember, Pastor? You're the greatest pastor in the whole wide world. <laughs> and that has not changed our heart. You've always been there for our family. Look at them. You uh, baptized all of them. Baptized all of them. You um, blessed all of them since they are babies. And we've been there uh, for both of you. And I have almost no words to say, although I'm Portuguese. But <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I put this mic down, I'm going to say so many things that I wish I would have said. But I just want to say how much our family loves and appreciate all that you've done. I just want to share one thing with you. No, okay, Portuguese coming out. <laughs> uh, there's this one time, there's this one time that um, <clears throat> it was a huge storm at Christmas time, and our whole, we were here at the church, and a huge tree fell on our garage. It crashed it to the bottom, and we didn't. everything how to fix it up yeah. and he was there for us yeah. I mean there's so many times that he's been there but that was a biggie for us because we were so lost <laughs> I didn't want to take up too much of everybody's time knowing that it was communion and knowing that um Christ. 
And in the same way, we can look to Pastor Ray and his great examples that he leads for us. And we want to lift them up to you, Lord. We pray that you draw them near. We pray a, a double portion blessing over them. We pray for good health. We pray for um, we pray for a continued ministry because uh, Pastor Ray and Atilani ministry doesn't end until they go home. And so we pray that you continue to strengthen them, uh, give them the, the wisdom and the patience to deal with um, all, of, all of us, basically. <laughs> Lord, we thank you so much for their hearts and all they do for this community, for this church, for each one of us individually. We love you, Lord. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. And we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Love you guys. Love you guys. Okay, so we do have some announcements for you this morning, but we're going to call we want to do something for you. Yes. We want to call all the children of 18 and under. Um, please come up to the front here and be blessed and be prayed over. We don't want to miss the opportunity to pray over you. So please come up 18 and under and be safe so you can pray. you and we are called to be what 
disciples. We are not called to be followers of Christ. And so when you think they're not watching or they're not listening, they are watching and they are listening. Be very aware. So I just want to pray for them. And if we can all just come in agreement. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our children. We thank you for your children. They are yours before they are ours, Lord. We thank you for loving them, Lord. We pray that you continue to answer their questions as we dive into the word. We, we pray that you continue to reveal yourself to each and every one of them in a unique way that will reach every one of them individually, Lord. We pray that you continue to answer their prayers. Continue to send the Holy Spirit with them wherever they go, Lord, that you lead them and guide them, that you be their strength, that you be their comfort, that you fill them with your peace and your joy like only you can, Lord. We pray for healing where healing is needed. But more than anything, Lord, we pray that they have the desire to follow Jesus for all the days of their life, that they go out and have the love that conquers all things, the faith that can overcome all things, the endurance to defeat the enemy, and the tenacity, Lord, to fight to the very end, to walk with you to the very end. We give you all the glory, Lord, for everything that they do, everything, all of their accomplishments, Lord, all of their good deeds, all the glory goes to you, Lord. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 for you, and I think we're going to find Dilani if she's okay to do an announcement. <laughs> and Dilani? Thank you for, uh, to those who have brought their boxes in. Um, every year we do uh, a box to five people outside. <laughs> so every year we participate in Operation Christmas Child, which sends a <laughs> Which sends a box of, of great things to kids all over the world. Yes. Anyway, if you have brought your box in, please um, uh, mark off your name so I know you won't be getting a call at 9 o'clock at night saying, Where's your box? <laughs> so they're due on the 17th, which is a Sunday, and then we're going to pray over them before they go out. And then Esther and I will take them down to the pickup center. So thank you so much for those who are participating. God bless you and keep you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So we have more announcements from our sister Chris. Come on down, Chris. So you could put your prayer request in there and people could pray for you specifically. Wouldn't that be awesome? Yes. They'll be praying for you anyway, but it might help to know exactly what you need. Um, Wednesday Bible study? Yep. Yeah. Five o'clock with dinner, right here. Thursday hula? Yes, I... I don't know how many of you were here yesterday and saw that amazing oh. hula. Um, it will be on... The service from yesterday, Sandra's service, will be on the YouTube channel either today or tomorrow. If you want to see some amazing hula, wow, it was beautiful. Um, and maybe you're inspired to join hula after watching such amazing hula. Uh, Kiala has promised that you will not be forced to dance in front of people, but you could just dance for Jesus on Thursday at 5, right here. <laughs> Friday morning, Yard Ninjas, 8 a.m., Rain or shine, making this place beautiful. And then Friday night, celebrate recovery at 6 p.m. I don't know if you know, but it's been happening for six years. Uh, that's six times 52 opportunities that you've had to come to celebrate recovery. Um, we now offer child care, and we would love to see you there. Drop your hurts, habits, and hang-ups. 
<laughs> um, Saturday, November 16th. Is that this coming Saturday? No. No, not yet. Okay. That's always the third Saturday is men's ministry at yeah. here at 9 a.m., including breakfast. And then women's ministry is always the last Saturday at 8 a.m., so that'll be on November 30th. The thrift shop will be open also on the 16th from 9 to 12. Come and do some shopping. And we're having a Christmas fair. I know you're excited. Yes, it'll be December 7th. Um, it opens at 8. If you know anyone who would like to be a vendor, all you need to do is give them my email address. They can email me and I'll send them all the information. I think we still have space for about nine people. So it's filling up and it's going to be a fun time. Even if you don't buy anything, you just come and hang out. It's a great time. Uh, we are currently on YouTube Live and um, we post our videos at newhopevolcano.com. There's also a lot of information there. And I send out a weekly email letting you know what's up, what's happening. If you would like to get that, all I need is your email address. And all honor and glory are his mahalo. Chris, I believe looking at people, I think that's it for announcements. That's why I was looking at you. All right, we have birthdays we like to do on the first Sunday of the month that we didn't do yet. So I'm going to announce them. We can sing happy birthday all together. Um, on the second, which was yesterday, is Bernadette Glory. Happy birthday, Bernadette. Also on the second is Little Eddie Rincon. Happy birthday, Little On the 11th is our brother Mike Polentino. Happy birthday, Heavenly Father, we come before you with grateful hearts, Lord. We're so thankful for all that you do in our lives, for the gift of life, Lord, that we can wake up and, and, and be in your presence. Father, we thank you that many of us are going through all kinds of different things in our lives, different aches and pains, different obstacles that's in our, in our path, struggles with our work days, struggles within our family. But we know, Lord, that our help comes from you. And so we set our hearts and our minds upon you. We come this morning and we gather and we lift our tithes and our offerings up to you. We pray that you multiply it in abundance and we pray that we use it according to your will. We thank you so much and we look forward for everything that you have in store for us this morning. We thank you, Lord, and we give you all the glory and we pray in Jesus' name. 
Amen. So, good morning, my wonderful family. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, this morning we'll be continuing uh, in our series uh, about studying the seven letters written by Jesus to the seven churches in Asia Minor. And uh, we've covered four other churches this morning. We've covered the church of Ephesus, uh, which can be known as the backsliding church. They forgot their first love. The church in Smyrna, which can be known as the hypocritical church, where they say one thing, they claim to be one thing, but in actuality they are not. We read about the compromising church in Pergamum that allowed worldly teaching to infiltrate the church. Uh, last time we spoke, we spoke about the church in Thyatira that was the tolerant church that practiced idolatry and immorality in the church. This morning, we'll be speaking about the church in Sardis. And the church in Sardis is known as the spiritually dead church. And we'll read this morning to understand why they have that reputation. And I'll read from you, it may be in your notes, it may be on the screen. I'll read it in its entirety, and then we'll break it down as we go. But the word says in Revelation chapter 3, verses 1 through 6, uh, Jesus says, To the angel of the church in Sardis write, these are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up. Strengthen what remains and is about to die, for I have found your deeds unfinished in the sight of my God. Remember, therefore, what you have received and heard. Hold it fast and repent. But if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what time I will come to you. Yet you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their clothes. They will walk with me, dressed in white, for they are worthy. The one who is victorious will, like them, be dressed in white. I will never blot out the name of that person from the book of life but will acknowledge that name before my Father and his angels. Whoever has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So the church in Sardis had a reputation of being alive, but they were actually dead, according to Jesus. And this is not a good reputation to have. So I wanted to cover, to begin, why, why is it good or important to have a good reputation. If you own a business, if you're a mechanic, a doctor, a chef, a pastor, or a Christian, your reputation matters. There are people who go uh, who go online before going to a restaurant to see how many reviews that restaurant has and to see if it has a good reputation or a bad reputation. When you book a trip to a hotel, you may go online to see how many star rating that hotel has, or to see what other people have to say about that hotel. Some people will only buy certain brands of vehicles. Some love Chevy, some love Ford. <laughs> some say Toyota lasts the longest. Others say Hondas. And they will purchase a certain brand of vehicle because the reputation that that brand has. How many of you have iPhones? Not too many, okay. And how many have Androids? All right, I bet if I asked each one of you which one is better, both sides would have great arguments as to why you're an iPhone person and why you're an Android person. I'm Android, by the way, just so you know. <laughs> But each brand, whether Apple, Android, Toyota, Ford, Nike, Microsoft, McDonald's, Hilton, Hawaiian Airlines, or Volcano School of Arts and Science Cafeteria, <laughs> they all have reputations that precede them. And this morning, if you would allow me to tell you a secret, each and every one of you have a reputation whether you know it or not. 
Pastor Ray is known for being loving, gracious. He has a wonderful sense of humor. Our brother Haki is spirit-led, cares for others. He's a lover of God's word. Our brother David Kale has big aloha. Every time you see him, he's got a big hug for you. He's got a contagious laugh, and he's ready to pray for anyone at any time. And I have a reputation. Some of you say nice things about me, and some of you don't. <laughs> and for those of you who don't, we'll talk after service. <laughs> but the truth, is, the truth is that sometimes our reputation is not what we think it is. Sometimes we have an idea of, of what other people see in us or think about us. And a great example is this. Um, yesterday at Anti Santos service, I had a classmate come who I had known since fourth grade. I've known her since fourth grade. And she came and she said, hey, hi, how are you doing? And she said, of all the things I would have never thought of would be a pastor. And I said, what do you mean? She said, I just never would have thought you would have been a pastor. So she, so she said that. I've had other people to say to me, oh, I guess I could see you being a pastor. But the truth is, whatever I thought of myself, she viewed me in a totally different light. I thought of myself as a nice guy, a good friend, you know, kind. But she saw me in a different light, and she couldn't believe that I was following the Lord. And so I'll put you guys on the spot, too, because you guys have reputation. Barbara, uh -oh. she's a prayer warrior. She loves people. She loves this country. She's gentle and loving and ready to encourage anyone. Our sister Chris, she's prompt. She's organized. If you need to know anything about what's going on, you can ask her. Sometimes she tells me when men's ministry is. <laughs> Brother Steve has a heart to serve. He told me once, he said, when he first came in, he said, I just want to be a part of the family. I'll clean toilets if you want me to clean toilets. And guess what? He's cleaning toilets. <laughs> Our brother Wade in the same way. He has a heart to serve. He wants to help build up the church. I got to hold him back because he wants to do so many projects. I told him we don't have enough time to do all these projects. But his heart is ready to serve. And this is the reputation that we have, that people see. And they make a, a judgment or they make a uh, perception. They have a perception about you. And so we all have reputations. And my prayer is that our reputation is the same inside the church as it is outside the church. I hope that the way that we view you here in the church or the way that you view me here in the church is the same that other people, the same way other people view us outside of the church. That we're not just coming to the church and being loving with our brothers and sisters, but that we're going outside of the church and sharing the love of Jesus with others. First Peter chapter 2, verse 12, the word says, Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day that he visits us. Amen. That we should be living good lives outside of the church and being an example to, to other people in our lives. We are called to live as Christians everywhere we are. That Jesus is glorified, Jesus is magnified, in our behaviors, in our interactions, that, uh, that the world may experience the love of Jesus through us. That's what we're called to do. Jesus says to the church in Sardis, I know your deeds. Jesus knows everything. He sees everything. There's nothing you're going to get by Jesus. He's, Jesus says to Sardis, I know everything that's going on here. I can see what's happening. And he says the same thing to us. We cannot hide anything from Jesus. He sees everything. And he says, um, um, you have a reputation of being alive, but you are actually dead. Now, how does that work? How does a church have a reputation for being alive, but is actually spiritually dead? It's a dead church. This can happen when a church is going through the motions. On the outside, everything looks perfect. The yard is well manicured, fresh paint on the buildings, 
The chairs are perfect. The stained glass is perfect. The band is on point. The, some churches may provide a light show with a little bit of fog, and everything looks awesome. Everything seems great, except they're missing one important thing. The Spirit of God is missing from the church. And the church is run off of self-reliance rather than spirit reliance. The church is more interested in programming rather than the presence of God. More interested in structure and less interested in the Spirit. You can do church without the Holy Spirit there, and some people will think they got a good thing going. And the truth is, as if the church is not Spirit-led and Bible-based, then you're just plain church. You're just plain church. So this, on the outside, the church in Sardis may have looked fine, their appearance, however, had not fooled Jesus. He knew the inward state of their heart. And he also knows who genuinely sought after him as compared to those who were just going through the motions. This was a church in name only whose members had grown overconfident and complacent. They had a false sense of security and they did their good works apart from Christ. Sadly, many in the church walls are convinced of the very same thing, that they're safe and secure. They may even do the right things, but in reality, they're just plain church, and they're living a lie. So unlike the other letters that we read up until this point, written to the seven churches, Christ's letter to the church in Sardis jumped straight to Christ's concern for the church. There was no commendation. There was no, um, uh, you were doing this well. It just went straight to the warning. And the situation in Sardis was dire. But in his grace, however, Christ offered the believers of Sardis one final chance to wake up, to repent, and to become alive again in Christ Jesus. So from the words of Christ's letter to the church at Sardis, several truths become instantly applicable for believers of all ages. And so I've given you in your notes five lessons that we learned from the church in Sardis, starting with number one, the first lesson we learned, is that sometimes we need to wake up. We have to wake up like a driver asleep at the wheel of a moving car, a complacent or careless Christian is destined to crash. In fact, throughout scripture, sleepiness or drowsiness is often used to describe unprepared or unfocused believers. They may have eyes, but they do not see. They may have ears, but they do not hear. And these Christians are spiritually asleep and just going through the motions. And Christians who ignore God's warnings, get this, will tolerate sin and even allow personal weaknesses to be exploited by a very real and a very persistent enemy. Amen. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 8, the word says, Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. That is the enemy that we're up against. And sometimes we can allow ourselves to be lulled to sleep with the comforts of our lives. We get comfortable doing things a certain way. We get comfortable in our bubble. And we don't allow ourselves to be stretched. Day in and day out, same old, same old. Then we let our guard down. We find things acceptable that wouldn't be acceptable in the past. We'll miss church more often. We can't remember uh, the last time we read our Bibles. We can't remember the last time we had a meaningful prayer. We haven't spoken to God in a couple days, maybe a few weeks. Maybe it's been a month since I had a very intimate, personal relationship with God. And that's how we can look like we are alive, but we are actually dead. We're just going through the motions. Going through the motions, but separated from our Savior. 
But praise God, in his, all his glory, there is hope. And Jesus says to wake up, to wake up. That's number one. Number two, the second lesson we learned from the letter to the church in Sardis is to strengthen the things that remain. Although Christ's assessment of the church in Sardis was that it was dead in its sins, God alone has the power to raise the dead and to bring dry bones to life. Amen? <laughs> Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 4 and 5, the word says, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. God is not beyond saving a sick or dying church, nor is he beyond uh, reviving the life of a fading believer. His message to the church in Sardis is the same uh, as to the struggling church or individual believer today. Find what is good, hold on to it, hold on to the dying embers, and look to God to rekindle the flame before it goes out entirely. Now, we're all at different stages or walks in our Christian life. Some of us are new believers. Some of us uh, have been believers for a long time. Some of us read the entire Bible within one year, every year. Some of us have never read the entire Bible at all. Some of us are prayer warriors. Some of us rarely pray. But if you find yourself going through the motions with no fire or desire to be in fellowship with God, if you feel distant or unsure, if all that remains in you is just a mustard seed of faith, Jesus says to strengthen what remains. Even if it's just a mustard seed, whatever you have. So how do we strengthen what little we have? How do we strengthen that? Well, one way is that we can trust God in our trials. We can trust that what the Bible says, he works all things for the good who loves who love him and are called according to his purpose. When we are struggling, we press into the Lord rather than trying to do things on our own. We seek him for answers. Instead of trying to figure things out by ourselves, we come to him in prayer and ask him to reveal to us. And remember that the Holy Spirit is our counselor. We seek uh, we obey his commands. We be doers of the word. If all you have is a little bit of faith, then you seek him. You read his word. You obey his commands. And if all you have is a little bit of faith and you're pressing into God, you can be thankful. Thankful for what you do have, what little you have. Giving him the glory for everything. That's how you can strengthen your faith and the little bit that you're hanging on to if you find yourself distant from the Lord. The third lesson we learned from the church in Sardis is number three, to remember what you have received and heard. In many instances, an individual believer's light, like a church's light, starts fading when it forgets God's truth and good things. And the believers in Sardis needed to return to the gospel and to the apostles' teachings about their own wisdom, rituals, and routine. Now, we just spoke about that a little bit. Sometimes we depend on our own wisdom. You know, there are sayings that sound great, but they're not biblical. Have you ever experienced this? There are great sayings that people repeat sometimes that sound great, but they're not Bible-based. They're not from the Bible. They just sound great. I wrote down a couple of examples. One of them is, God helps those who help themselves. <laughs> right? You hear that all the time. God helps those who help themselves. I don't see that in the Bible. <laughs> How about this one? Cleanliness is next to godliness. Have you ever heard that one? My wife tried to pull that one on me a couple of times. I said, I didn't see that in the Bible. <laughs> Here's another one. God forgives those who forgive themselves. Have you heard that? That's not exactly how it works. 
But they take a little bit of scripture and they twist it just a little bit. Here's one that might be difficult because I've said this before. God works in mysterious ways. Yeah? God works in mysterious ways. We've said that before. But I don't, you're not going to find that in the Bible. The road to hell is paved with good intentions. That's another great one, right? So although they hold some truth, this is the wisdom of man. And it's not biblical wisdom. And remember, Jesus says to remember what you have received and have heard. And he's not saying what you have received and heard from man. He's saying what you have received and heard from the word of God, from the teachings of the apostles, that we should remember and hold on to those things. Um, so to avoid getting to this place that the church of Sardis is in, Christ urges all believers to remember what they have received and have been taught from the word of God. And the psalmist writes in Psalm chapter 1, verses 2 and 3, that the righteous man will delight. Um, delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruits in the seasons, and its leaf does not wither, and in whatever he does, he prospers by delighting in the word of God. And another one, John, chapter 14, verse 26, uh, speaking of the Holy Spirit, to, uh, reminding us, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and remind you of all I said to you. Now, I'm not quite as fancy as Pastor Ray to put those underlining uh, lines in there, but if I was good like Pastor Ray, I would underline, he will teach you all things and remind you of all that I said to you. The Holy Spirit will remind us. It will help us to remember what we have heard and received. We can count on the Holy Spirit for that. And what is awesome about that is when we, when we study God's Word and we read it and we study it, if we don't understand it, we dig a little deeper. There, there's Google, guys. We have Google. We have access to Google. If you don't understand something, you can look up a commentary. But my point is, when we study God's word in that way, and it is, it is uh, etched on our hearts, then when we're, when we're put in situations, we can call upon God's word. The Holy Spirit will remind us of God's word, and it can be applicable for whatever we're going through in life. So Jesus says, remember what you have received and what you've heard. The fourth thing that Jesus said, or the fourth lesson from this letter, is to keep and obey God's word. Of course, true revival doesn't just come from merely hearing. And I know we talk about this often. One must also put into practice the things one has heard and choose to obey God's word. Therefore, the believers in Sardis were challenged to know the truth and to act upon it. Keep and obey God's word. Uh, famously, James chapter 1, verses 20 through 25. Uh, James says, Do not merely listen to the word of God and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in the mirror and, after looking, him, looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. So not just reading it and forgetting about it, or reading it and knowing about it but not doing it. He said to read it, to know it, and to do it. I know sometimes when you see me not on Sunday, it looks like I didn't look in the mirror. And my, and my hair is all crazy. But when it comes to the Word of God, we are supposed to read it and know it, and we're supposed to live it out and do it. And that is the application, right? It's not enough to have biblical knowledge if correct belief doesn't lead to correct living, right? You can have correct belief, but if you don't have correct living, 
then the application is not there. The application is what is important. This is not just for your general knowledge. This is instructions for life. You take what is written in here and you apply it to your life. That's where the rubber meets the road, right? That's where we're going to decide if we're going to be mature Christians or immature Christians. Are we going to do what it says even though we don't want to? Because many times that is the situation that we have to do something we don't want to do, but we are commanded by the word of God to do it. And that is the difference. And when we don't do it, then we are being disobedient to the word of God. So when making decisions, if we look at it that way, it kind of helps us. Uh, it encourages us to be obedient to the word of God. Because if we don't do what the word says, then we are being disobedient. And that is not the place we want to be. Okay, so the fifth and final lesson, or the fifth and final um, thing that Jesus says to this church, that this church should repent for the church of Sardis to come alive again. Its members had to confess and to turn from their sins. Now, this is an interesting one because sometimes we think that we can ask for forgiveness and we are forgiven and we can go on about our day. We can go on. We're back in God's good graces because we're forgiven. But the truth is, if we do not repent and turn away from our sins, that's the difference is that Whatever we're asking forgiveness for, we have to turn away from it. The Bible says that. Jesus encourages us to do that, to turn away from our sins, meaning we're not going to continue to do the same sin over and over, asking forgiveness, and everything is fine. When we know it's not fine, we're going to continue to live in that sin. So Jesus is saying, repent from that sin. You are forgiven, but turn away from that sin, and don't continue to live a lifestyle of sin. And that is a, a, a true transformation when we turn away from our sin. No church or individual believer can ever hope to experience genuine revival without genuine repentance. Christ's warning of judgment to Sardis should remind believers uh, in any period, God's promises are true. And that includes his promise of forgiveness and grace. And it includes his promise to judge those who reject him and refuse to turn from their sinful ways. That's, a, that's the part we leave out from time to time. Yes, God is gracious. God is forgiving. He promises to forgive us. But he is also a just God who will judge. And there will be a judgment. And how much do you want to answer for because we will have to answer for every word that we say. Uh, 1 John chapter 1, and verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all righteous, unrighteousness. Now, thankfully, a handful of true believers in Sardis had not spoiled their garments or lost their light. Their character had been kept pure their hearts had kept hungry and thirsty for God's goodness and grace. To these, Jesus promised in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 5, that they, those who remain righteous, those who hunger and thirst for God, they will walk with me in white, for they are worthy. The one who overcomes will be clothed the same way in white garments, and I will not erase his name from the book of life. And I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. These believers could find hope in the assurance of their salvation in Christ and know that their names were eternally sealed in the book of life. This is an amazing reward and blessing. If we could only imagine for a moment, Jesus says that those who have not soiled their garments meaning who did not smear their white garments with unholy living, that their character remained godly. For these people, their names remain in the book of life. And Jesus says that he will confess their name before the Father and before his angels. Think about that for a moment. As most of you know, our dear sister Sandra Julio went home to be with our father. And I just imagine... Jesus, reading her name from the book of life, 
before our Father God and His angels. Sandra Julio! <laughs> and our Father responds, Well done, good and faithful servant. Hallelujah! Romans chapter 8, verse 34 says, Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. He, Jesus is there speaking on our behalf. This letter to the church in Sardis, along with the seven uh, letters that we'll be covering, gives us an opportunity to really do a heart check, to make sure that we are living a life worthy of our calling, that we not only appear to be spiritually alive on the outside, but on the inside as well, as well. And my prayer in digging into these seven letters is that each one of us will open our hearts and open our ears to hear from Jesus as he speaks to these churches. And because we individually make up the church as a whole, we should examine every nook and cranny of our hearts and minds to be sure that we are fully prepared for the return of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. If we can bow our heads. Father, we thank you so much for your word. Your word that leads us and guides us. Jesus, we thank you for speaking to these churches, for encouraging them, for getting right to the heart of the matter. That whatever was not of you that was in these churches, you said that they should correct it, they should repent, that they should turn to you. We pray, Lord, that as you speak to these churches, that you can speak to our hearts in the same way. That we should be seeking to have a very intimate and close personal relationship with you. That whatever is not of you that is in us, Lord, we pray that you remove it. We pray that we can repent from our sins and turn away from them and turn our hearts fully and totally to you. We thank you for that word this morning. Congregation, we've reached the point in the message where we want to offer those who do not have or have not had a relationship with Christ Jesus to begin one now. Yeah. That may not be you or that may be you this morning where you are ready to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Maybe you've never done it before. You don't know how to do it. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10 and verse 9, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your hearts that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. And so if you are here this morning and you are experiencing that, that you, you, you want to begin a relationship with Jesus, that you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, that Jesus is real and he is alive, and you are not sure how to begin to have a relationship with him. We want to help you with that. We want to say a prayer, asking Jesus to come into your life and doing what Paul said here in Romans 10, confessing with your mouth. So we're going to say a prayer, and you can repeat after me. And I, I want to ask the rest of the brothers and sisters here, even though you have a relationship with Christ, Please say the prayer as well as it can be an edification or an encouragement for those who are saying it for the first time. So please repeat after me. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. Dear, Jesus Dear Jesus, I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. I've, done I've done lots of things on my own. On my own. I have not always, always asked for your help or your advice. Your I want to change that now. Change that now. This, morning, this morning, I recognize you, I recognize you as, my as my forgiver. And I want to follow you, to follow you as, my leader. as my leader. Come into my life. Come into my life. And as best as I know how, as as I know how for as long as I know how, I, know how, I will follow you. I will follow you. So now I say, so that you can hear me, so that I can hear me, so that my neighbor can hear me, and the devil can hear me. Jesus Christ is my Lord. I will follow him and him alone. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me. Father, I thank you for those who have said that prayer for the first time. 
I pray that you make your presence known on their hearts. Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for Pastor Appreciation, for Pastor Ray and, 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 and uh, Auntie Lani. We thank you for the food that you have provided. We pray that it nourish our minds and our bodies. We thank you for this time of fellowship we're about to share. We pray that your presence rests among us, that your Holy Spirit flow, flow freely this morning. We love you, O oh Lord. We give you all of the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. And we pray in your Son, Christ Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Pastor Jason, Father Pastor Happy, uh, Kea, Father for all the uncles and the aunties who have been holding it down here for so many years. And, um, I really want to say mahalo to um, those of you who, like the new people who I see. I see one couple working really hard out there getting the food ready. I saw, I, I got to that a uh, couple this morning who came. They actually took my parents' came in there. They've been doing that for years and years and years. And yeah, thank you guys for stepping up, all you guys. I'm so happy to be able to come back to this church and pass the way. Thank you so much. We're so blessed to have a pastor who's a true man. Thank you. 